what were they doing? They were turning people away who, who needed to be cared for? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I spent three days down there. I had more intense emotional conversations with healthcare staff than I've had in my entire career as a journalist. Um, you know, you had cases where people who had had, you know, a stroke had to wait in the ER um, for more than a day. Um, hours and minutes matter when you have a stroke. Um, days are a long time. You had COVID patients who probably should have been in an ICU, but there were no ICUs left. Um, you had patients waiting for ECMO um, who were told that they were too old because there were no more ECMO machines in the state. You had people who would have been probably transferred up to an advanced center like University of Kentucky in normal times, but instead, you know, their physicians had to be told, you need to have a conversation with the family about what's realistic here. Um, people die because of this stuff. I, I, you know, the, when you put a hospital system under strain, lives are lost, care is not delivered in the same way that it usually would be, and that means suffering and death. And you know, the hospital staff that I talked to, those people have meaningful, severe PTSD because of this. I mean, you see a lot of people who are out there doing their jobs and you know, breaking down at the end of the day. Um, it, is, it is an incredible strain on these systems, and that has consequences for the people who need care in them. Hey, thanks for watching Bloomberg Quick Take Now. Subscribe to our channel to see the biggest stories the moment they happen from around the world. And tune in to our 24-7 live stream for global news coverage, documentaries, interviews, deep dives, and shows on the stories that you care most about.